WFSB. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicole Nulepa, and today is Thursday, February 16th, 2023. Thanks for joining us on Eyewitness News. Let's get to your top stories this morning. We continue to follow the aftermath of the closure of a longtime nursing school. To the surprise of students and staff, Stone Academy ended up closing its doors immediately at all three locations across the state last night. Now, some students were even in the middle of class yesterday when the director made the announcement. Stone Academy students were told the programs would continue until March 27th, but now they're left with questions regarding whether or not their credits will actually roll over at another school. The schools will remain open for administrators until February 24th, and staff will be available to assist students during that time. Also happening this morning, staff members at a Connecticut nursing home are planning to hold a rally at the Capitol as lawmakers are set to discuss a bill that could reshape their industry. A group from St. Mary's Nursing Home is pushing lawmakers to pass legislation for better care for patients and more accountability. The American Health Care Association released a new analysis just last month and found that nursing homes have lost 210,000 workers over the course of the pandemic alone. At the current pace of hiring, nursing homes would not return to pre-pandemic levels until 2027. A community in Wyndham County is still reeling after investigators found three people, including a small child, dead inside of an apartment. We first brought you this story as breaking news Wednesday morning. Police were called out to a home in Brooklyn on Middle Street for a reported suspicious incident, but they made the gruesome discoveries shortly after they went inside. And neighbors tell us that a family lived in that apartment. My daughter Tyra called me up and asked me, what, you hear about what happened? I said, no, I just woke up. And I walked out the door. I see everybody, the road was blocked off and everything was going on here. I says, this is getting ridiculous. Police have not released any more details about the people who died. And a school superintendent will be suspended for two weeks without pay after being arrested for drunk driving. But some parents feel that the punishment doesn't go far enough. The Region 16 Board of Ed voted to suspend Superintendent Michael Yamin last night. He was arrested in Florida back in September and pleaded his DUI charge down to reckless driving. But Yamin didn't tell the board about it until January, which is when he received a raise in pay. Parents we spoke with believe that he should have faced more significant consequences, and they tell us that students are already mocking him on social media, as you see here. It's absolutely just destroyed any kind of credibility he might have, and the memes aren't going to stop. Social media is just going to keep perpetuating this. The board chairman refused to speak with us on camera, but said that the board members respect what Yemen has done over his tenure, and now they just want to move forward. Pushing back against higher tuition, hundreds of UConn students took their fight to the state capitol yesterday. They urged lawmakers to invest in state universities. The demonstrators are upset that UConn leaders say that although the governor's budget includes an increase in funding, it falls short and would force the school to raise tuition. I want to emphasize that today is not just about the budget shortfall here today that we're facing at UConn, but a broader issue of lack of funding for higher education. Higher education is the future. It's the future of Connecticut. UConn received a lot of federal funding last year, in fact, because of the pandemic. And Governor Lamont says that the state can simply not continue covering that extra federal aid going forward. While UConn students continue to rally against the new budget proposal, Governor Lamont continues to tout the benefits of his plan. Later this morning, the governor will announce investments in affordable and workforce housing throughout Connecticut. He'll be joined by the Department of Housing Commissioner at an event that starts at 11 o'clock right at the Connecticut Housing Partners site. And we'll be sure to bring you all the details on that on Channel 3 and the Channel 3 app. Scott? All right, thanks, Nicole. Hey, we're looking at a pretty good day, pretty good start out there anyway. Uh, Doppel scans to stay dry. Good morning, everybody. It's time to rise and shine. You really don't even need, uh, you certainly don't need that winter coat, maybe just a light jacket in parts of the state. We're getting out the bus, roll out the bus, get on the bus, don't be late for the bus. 60 degrees February, it's February 16th, 62. 
for the ride home. Could even be 65 in parts of the state, and especially in inland Connecticut. Beautiful sunrise, Old Saybrook. Good morning, Mystic. Hello. Thanks for joining us this morning. A little bit of cloud coverage making for an absolutely gorgeous start. 50 degrees in New Haven at 7.05 in the morning. Visibility at a perfect 10. All right, now the temperatures, they have come down a little bit. 39 at Bradley, 39 in Meriden, 38 in Willimantic, but the numbers are going to start marching back up into the mid-60s in inland, low 60s for the shoreline. We are up anywhere from 4 to 8 to 13 degrees warmer than 24 hours ago. Pretty remarkable. And the winds are light, but they're out of the south, and that's the way they'll be today, and they're going to be picking up, so it's going to be a breezy day today. You'll already start to see the clouds making um, a movement on Connecticut. This is all part of a much bigger storm system that's marching through Kentucky and Tennessee. Look at that tornado watch box up for uh, portions of the nation. That's not good. All right, so keep a good thought for those folks. But for us, this tends to weaken as it rolls on into Connecticut. And by, let's say, 3, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, here we go, some scattered showers marching through. They're done pretty much by 7, 8 o'clock. And then tonight, mostly cloudy. We're talking about... Um, very mild temperatures tonight and then tomorrow morning you wake up to mostly cloudy skies and here comes some rain starting at around seven eight o'clock it's pouring at 10 maybe a little lightning and thunder noontime it's winding down from west to east and then we get to back to the partial clearing during the day here's the temperature trend today would you like to ride in my beautiful balloon Way up in the sky, it'll be 65 degrees. Uh, 61, 62 for the shoreline. Pretty remarkable numbers with mostly cloudy skies. Don't forget the umbrella. You're going to need it later this afternoon through early this evening. Then again, we get a little break for the third shifters under mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow morning brings more rain in. But breezy, milder than it was yesterday. And yesterday was pretty mild. Showers late. Sun was up at 645, sets at 525. And here comes your seven-day forecast. 52 for the overnight low tonight. Remarkable. 58 tomorrow. That comes early. The temperatures start dropping once the front makes its way through. With that rain in the morning, the temperatures will start dropping. And by the evening rush, we're in the 30s. Overnight low, Friday night into Saturday, 20 with a real feel of 10 to 15. A dramatic drop in temperature and real feel is headed in our direction. Saturday, we rebound to 40. That's a pretty chilly day compared to where we've been. But then we march right back up to 51 degrees on Sunday with mostly sunny skies. 53 on Monday with a chance for a morning shower. Tuesday looks partly sunny. Temperatures in the mid-40s. Wednesday, a chance for showers. Highs in the mid-40s again. So it does get a little bit cooler, but temperatures still well above average for this time of year. All right, 707 and a half. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. That was a beautiful rendition of the fifth dimension, Scott. Thank you much. I appreciate that so much. Loved it. And how apropos because the season of Aquarius doesn't end for another two days. So let's celebrate and celebrate this beautiful weather Scott was just talking about. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning into Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get your news and weather updates anytime on that Channel 3 app. Have a great day. Be healthy. Stay positive.